kicks. The, the total, the whole game is different. Judo throw. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be watching it, bro. So are you a Bible-believing Christian? Uh, yes, I am. I uh, I am a Bible-believing Christian, as you say. All right. And what, what Bible translation do you read? Uh, King James and then the newer version. Okay. The, the more easier to uh, understand. Okay. And you know how to win the interrogation room? Um, no, I don't. Uh, I, the only reason I got on here is uh, I, I don't really care about uh, winning or losing. Uh, I'm going to pray for you tonight. You're, don't, don't, don't do it. The, don't do it, man. Don't do it. At the end of the day. <laughs> if your God answers matter. a prayer for me before he answers every single prayer for every child being violated in the world right now, I'm going to tell your God to fuck himself, right? That's <laughs> that's pretty terrible, you know? Yeah, um, no, it's, it's great because he needs to answer you're, you're every single prayer of every child. Every child that's being violated right now before he helps me find my car keys. Because it's not all about me, right? I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> I care about the children, baby. All right, so here we go. King James Version. We're going to get you out of here quick, bud, because I know you got a fight to watch. So I'm just going to crush you real quick. Can God <laughs> repent? Here we go. I'm ready. I said, can God repent? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. Okay, everybody heard him say, everybody heard what he said. He said, God cannot repent. Oh, God damn. Nice try, Bubba. Open your Bible, since you don't know the fucking book that you say you think is divine. Exodus 32, 14 in King James reads, So the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Wait, he did what? So the Lord repent. Wait, he did what? So the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Nice try, little man. Go study your Bible more and come back and talk to daddy. Who do we got next? We got Chico Dusty. Looks like a fake profile, but we're going to try him out. Oh, hello. Chico. What's good, brother? Not much. How's it going? I'm doing good, man. Are you a Bible-believing Christian? I am a Bible-believing Christian, but my knowledge is... It might oh, not be up there. No, damn. You're starting out bad, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I'd right. like to try, though. I'm going to start you off easy, man. If you get one wrong, you're out of here. Here we go. All right, all right. So I'm going to start you off with about, let's do five real easy ones, just to know if you even give a shit at all to study your book. Uh, who baptized Jesus? Uh, John the Baptist. And where was Jesus born? Uh, hold on one second. Um, Don't uh, Google it, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I, I, sure um, okay. I just can't think of the damn name. Um, Jesus of Nazareth. There we go. Bethlehem. I'll give it to you. What were the names oh, of Noah's Bethlehem. three sons? Ooh, I don't know. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <sighs> nice try, Bubba. If you think you have a divine book, what I need you to do is study it. All right. Uh, I'm going to help you out. Shim, Ham, and Japheth. Nice try. Uh, next, we got Dustin Miller. He wants to try his hand at the Christian room. Let's go, Bubba. Are you a Bible? Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey what's I, up, bro? I had a question for you. You had a yeah. question earlier about how many days and 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 uh, nights Noah was out on the ark. How long was? Yeah, I know the answer. Yeah, no. I, uh, my question was when people responded, you said, "Let's see how many liars they are." Yeah. So you think someone who gets the answer no, wrong no, no, is a no, liar? No. No, no, see, this is your, this is the problem. They're not a liar because they got it wrong, because they might just have got it wrong and not know. They're a liar because they say that they believe they have a divine book. They believe that they have a book, God himself, that was hanged from the clouds. But they don't take the time to study it day and night. They don't read it. They don't care about the contents, the narratives, the allegories, the metaphors, how to achieve salvation. They don't know shit about their book. So they're a liar when they say that they believe they have a divine book. They don't really believe that shit. They just fucking say it. Because if they did believe it, guess what? They would know what's inside, little man. Who do we got next? We got David. Big David looks like a big man from Arizona State. What's up, though? Hey, what's up? What's up, David? Are I'm you here a Bible to be interrogated. Christian? All right, brother. Yes. You're a Bible believer, Christian? Yes. And you believe 2 Timothy 3.16? What's it say? Yeah, I believe it. It says, it says all Scripture is the truth breathed by, breathed by God. All yes. of it. Not some of it, not a little bit, all. All right, perfect. Yeah. So that, that raises okay. the question, though, what do you consider to be Scripture? The entirety of the Bible. 
Is that is that what your definition of scripture is? Well, let's look it up. I believe Second Timothy three sixteen when it says all scripture is the truth breathed by God is speaking of every single scripture inside that book, not a portion, not a percentage, not a little bit, but all of it, the entirety of it. All. Yeah, it I do, I, yeah, I do believe that. I, I accept okay, that. The, I accept that the sixty six books contained within the. Uh, the Christian Bible are inspired. Now, as far as the book of Enoch or some of the other books that Catholics use, I, I couldn't say one way or another without further study. And you said you read the King James Version? No, I read every version, man. I, I, study, I study the Greek and Hebrew and, you know, the original languages. Well, hold on. Every one, okay. Every one of them. Every translation can't be the truth breathed by God because they say different things. So I'm asking you, which one do you believe is the truth breathed by God? I believe that the original manuscripts were inspired by God. But those were lost. God allowed those to be lost or destroyed, so we can't go off those. So which one well, we, now? We have, we, have, we have reliable copies of the originals. And, and, what, and what version is that? What translation is that? There's, there's a, many different translations. Can, can you give me one? Because I want to know how to attack you as soon as you get a wrong answer. Okay, so uh, I want to be able to. Yeah, the Berean Study Bible is one that I commonly go to on the Bible Hub. Oh, great. So you commonly go to it, so you should know a lot of these. All right, perfect. Here we go, man. How many spirits does God have? Seven. Beautiful. And how long were Noah and his family on the ark? I think they were, it was over a year, but, you know, I would have to go back and check and so your answer, wait time out so your answer is you don't know not off, like the top of, not, not off of the top of my head i mean i would so if you're taking a test right you go into class test day teacher says put your answer down on this piece of paper and you say hey i don't know the answer at least not off the top of my head well guess what the teacher says the teacher says hey you fail little man see you later alligator try again how about you study harder right uh the answer to this question for the Christians in the back who think that they have a divine book, but they don't fucking study it, is 371 days, all right? It poured down rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Then it continued to rain for the next 150 days. Then the waters decreased for 74 days. And then for 21 days, he sent out a dove. Then 29 days later, Noah removed the covering from the ark. And then 57 days later after that is when Noah and his family and the animals all exited the ark. So if you do the math from beginning to end, there were 371 days. Nice try, little man. Send me your best. Can someone please send me your best preacher, friend, pastor, family member, somebody who thinks they could defeat daddy? Because they can't, right? This guy said, I doubt the host has $100. Hey, Baba, do me a favor. Put your address down in the comment section. And what I'm going to do for you, since you don't think I have $100, I'm going to mail you one of my bobblehead dolls from my fan appreciation night. And also, I'm going to sign it for you. And I want you to do this. When you get it, when you receive it in the mail, I want you to put it in your kitchen. huh? <laughs> so every night your wife's doing dishes, she can look at daddy's face. All right? That'll be nice. Here we go, Bubba. Next guest, TJ. TJ, come back, bro. Don't request to join and leave. What the fuck, man? Uh, we got about another, what do we got, another hour in here? This person said, why do you care so much? Well, the real question is, why do you care? If I invalidate your fairy tale God, right? It's important to me to get people to follow the truth and get them away from flawed ideologies. So we want to get more people away from traditional religion as possible. Because when people with poor logic and emotional problems start following an imaginary being and using a fallacious immoral book as their standard for living, it has to be stopped. Especially when those vile abhorrent beliefs begin to affect society start wars, influence political policies, and dilute the minds of others, right? we got to shut the shit down. Also, anything that happens inside of a closed system ultimately affects that system in one way or another. So we can't just sit back and be indifferent or dismissive towards immorality or flawed belief systems. Nah. Another reason I care so much for the people asking this question is because I love you, bro. I care about you. So obviously, I want you to follow the one true living God of the universe and not any of these fake fairy tale gods. Lastly, anything that has the power to make you believe atrocities has the power to make you commit atrocities. And for that, for the people in the back, is Voltaire. Uh, what do we got, man? You care about hearing... I hate, to, I hate hearing myself talk. Allie, I hate this. This isn't fun. No one wants to hear Gordon Ramsay talk, right? 
People want to watch Gordon Ramsay cook, but I can't cook. I don't have any ingredients. And my ingredients just so happen to be Christians, baby. So how about you go find me one? Maybe you think you're one. Are you a strong Christian? Come on up and talk to daddy, right? Send me your best preacher, pastor, friend, family member, anybody you fucking got. Send me some ingredients and watch me cook so you don't have to hear me talk to myself because I don't like talking. Daddy likes cooking, right? <laughs> Let's talk about logic. Logic is a vital element for attaining knowledge and understanding reality. If we had a universe where the laws of logic were not set, we could never function. For example, someone could say, I exist and I do not exist at the same time. Or it's snowing and it's not snowing. We would never be able to know anything. Biology, mathematics, anthropology, genetics, etc. would not make any sense. The laws of logic, though, are how we're able to make sense of the world. Luckily, they are unchanging, universally and objectively true. They are not subjective or relative. They cannot evolve, and they cannot be undermined or violated even by God himself. The reason is because they are a part of God's essential, necessary being. And finally, there's no sense talking to someone who doesn't believe in the rules of logic because logic is the proper way we reason about things. If someone can reason properly, well, there would be nothing to gain from any type of dialogue with that person. And for the people in the back who say logic doesn't exist, you can't even try to prove logic doesn't exist without you yourself using logic, little man. And that would be circular reasoning. Nice try, Bubby. Uh, next guest, here we go. We got Taylor Dub. Taylor, what up, bro? Hello. Yo. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's going on? Uh, I've never seen hey. your channel before. This is the first time I've ever seen it. And uh, hey, man, we get shut down so much. I'm banned probably like every other day, bro. <laughs> we used to, we used to get like ten thousand viewers on these lives, yeah. and then TikTok put a shadow ban on me. Now they ban me for like weeks at a time. But mm -hmm. I'm back right now, so you caught me. All right. Well, uh, so yeah, you started talking. You kind of sound like a Muslim. Are you a Muslim? No, nah, dude, I'm a theistic essentialist, man. I'm not even allowed to associate with those guys. We're not allowed to associate with certain people, right? And Aisha well, okay. would agree with this because she was yeah. she was six, right? Yeah. Uh, we're not allowed to associate with those guys, LGBTQ members, uh, Hebrew Israelites, a few others. The same reason I tried to explain this last time, but TikTok took me down. Um, but basically the reason is you don't go over to your neighbor's house if you know they're vile, disgusting fellas. Anyways, are you a Bible-believing Christian? Well, uh, before I answer any of your questions, I actually just want to know, like, what what is a theistic essentialist? What is the source of their belief? So we're deists. We're a modern form of deism. So we know that God exists. We're logic based on on logic, not faith. Uh, we know that God exists. We know God created life, laws, limits in the universe. But we know God cannot intervene in his creation because it would violate his essential nature. So God cannot do logical absurdities, and a logical absurdity would be something that violates his essential nature, a necessary being. So every claim that I make to you, I can prove using a logically deductive syllogism. While there's nothing wrong with having faith, uh, you should never make faith-based claims. You should only make fa uh, claims you can prove using sound logic and reason. Okay, so, so that's my answer for you. But this is the Christian interrogation room. I have other live streams where you can come interrogate me about my beliefs. Well, that's not what tonight I is. I, I'm not. I don't want to interrogate. You can ask me one more question. I'll give you one more, and then we're going to do the interrogation room. Go ahead, bro. Okay. Um, well, uh, so <clears throat> I guess I guess we'll just skip that because I uh, I had a question and then I forgot it. So we'll go ahead and go straight to the interrogation. Perfect. Some famous deists you may have heard of. Uh, Albert Einstein was a deist, Thomas Paine, some of the founding fathers. Uh, yeah, so just look it up, bro, if you don't know about it. All right, here we go. Uh, what translation do you read? Um, the King James. All right, man, beautiful. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple easy questions to start, then we'll really get cooking. Uh, how many wise men came to visit maybe Jesus after his birth? Three. Nice try, little man. You lose. I'm going to keep you going just for fun, okay? Usually if you get one Wait, wrong, you out of here. How many were there? Uh, it actually doesn't say. Look at all the Christian liars in the room putting three. That's funny. Uh, it says three gifts were given, but it doesn't list the number of guests. How many times have you been to a party? This guy knows. Look at I mean, Lisa. She knows. How many times have you been to a party and the number of gifts doesn't match the number of guests? So I'd appreciate if you Christian liars would stop saying three because it's just sad and pathetic. You think you have a divine book, but you don't care enough to know what's inside. All right, next question. Uh, are people saved by faith or by works? Faith. Huh? Faith. God damn, bro. 
Proverbs twenty four twelve. Here we go. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Pro hold on. So wait, no, no. I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain something to you, and then you can speak. Okay. Proverbs twenty four twelve, James two fourteen, Matthew sixteen twenty seven, and Revelation twenty twelve all say you're saved by works. Okay, time out. Don't don't interrupt me. Yet. Matthew or sorry, Romans three twenty eight and Ephesians two eight through nine say you're saved by faith. So the correct answer, if you had a brain, would be you're saved by both. I tried to trick you. You fell for the trick, and you said faith. Faith is not the answer. The correct answer is both. So nice try, little man. You got hit with the. Ready for the next one? Or did oh, you have no, something to that's say? Not, that's not correct at all. <laughs> oh, it's not okay. Everybody open your Bibles together. Proverbs 24, 12. Let's read well, it together. Right. We're going to go over each you're, one of these. First of all, your misunderstanding of the Bible doesn't mean that it's wrong. <laughs> I like when they say I'm misunderstanding the Bible. I'm a fucking cox expert, Bubba. Everybody heard you say, when I asked you, are people saved by faith or works? Everyone heard you say faith. You didn't say both. You said faith, right? So I read you all the verses that say people are saved by works. And then I proved to you that the correct answer you should have given was both. But you didn't say that. So now we're going to read Proverbs 24, 12 together. Here we go. Don't excuse yourself by saying, look, we didn't know. For God understands all hearts and he sees you. He who guards your soul knows you knew. He will repay all people as their actions deserve. Wait, as their what? As their actions deserve. Wait, no, faith, right? No, I thought it was faith. Faith, as their actions deserve. Nice try, little man. So, that's the first one. Let's go to another one. Let's go to James 2.14. Let's see if James 2.14 says faith or works. Did he say he read the King James Version? I want to make sure I read the right one for him. What doth it profit, my brethren, thou a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? <laughs> Can faith save him? Let's continue to read. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of all daily food, and one shall say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. All right, let's go to another one. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he shall repay each person according to what he has done. Wait, I thought, I thought the guest said people are going to be saved by faith. I thought he said faith. What does this say? He will repay each person according to what he has done. That doesn't say faith. That says works, little man. Nice fucking try. Let's go to another one. Let's go to Revelation 2012. Revelation 2012 reads. Actually, we don't want ESV. We want this. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Wait, according to their what? According to their works. But he said faith. Too bad this says according to their works. Right? So, hey Bubba, nice try. Next time if you come on up and talk to Daddy, don't get hit with that buzzer. If I ask you, are people saved by faith or works? The correct answer is both. All right, who's our next guest? Space Age, come back, bro. You were in the queue. You were up next, baby. Let's go. All right, we got Chris Khalifa. Looks like Wiz Khalifa. What's up, bro? Yo, what's up, man? What's good? You a uh, Bible believing Christian? Yeah, I prove that I believe in the flying monkey. That's beautiful. You know that, that this live stream is not about no fucking flying monkey. So you could take that crazy shit elsewhere, little man. Have a seat in the back of the fucking class. Daddy's talking. I like when people say, uh, that was the Old Testament, right? 
How dare you? How dare you be so disrespectful and invalidate other people's lives, just try to sweep it under the rug like they don't matter, like their lives didn't happen, or by minimizing their lives by saying, we don't need to remember them or what happened to them in the name of my fake fairy tale God. Hmm? Let me remind you, for them, it wasn't the Old Testament times. For them, it was their actual real fucking lives. And also to think how far behind me you have to be mentally to say something like, oh, my God used to be a vile, immoral, abhorrent piece of shit. But guess what? He changed. He evolved. He's much nicer now. Who cares if he used to be bad? Who cares? James, what up, bro? Appreciate you. Who cares? We're just going to sweep that shit under the rug. Hey, he's disrespectful as fuck, right? How dare you talk like that to daddy? All right, next up, we got uh, the prophets. Boy, look. Boy Hat lives in his mom's basement and watches Dr. Sebi videos. What up, bro? Not much. How you doing? Like, I'm doing great, man. Are you a Bible believing Christian? I'm a spiritualist. Huh? I'm a spiritualist. A Pharaoh's foot? I, I believe in God and Jesus and a fearless. Someone who believes in the spirit. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time, little man. Are you a Bible-believing Christian? Yes. All right, beautiful. That's all I need to know. And you believe but, in the Bible, you said, yeah? I don't need no yeah. fucking butts. I need to know if you believe in the Bible, yes or no, little man. Why are you talking? You it's a yes you or no question. Me, hey, I don't give a fuck who I remind friend. you of. Hey, did I ask you who? Did you? Who I remind you of? Did I tell you I give a fuck about that? No. What I need to know is, are you a Bible-believing Christian? Yes or no? So then I can start cooking, right? Gordon Ramsay's ready to cook. I'm standing in the kitchen. I got my ingredients, and I'm ready to put you in the pot, right? But I don't put people in the pot who aren't Bible-believing Christians because then it loses its power. Because then when I record this shit and I post it all around the Internet on social media, YouTube, and everywhere until the end of time, and then you come back later and say... Oh, I was just trolling. I don't really believe in the Bible. I don't really believe in God. I don't believe in none of that shit. Well, then it takes away all the power from me. What I want to do is I want to cook real strong Bible-believing Christians, the preachers, the pastors, the guy who taught your fucking Bible study class last Thursday. That's who daddy wants to talk to. huh? I don't want to talk to a troll that then later comes back after I intellectually humiliate him and say, oh, I didn't believe this shit anyways. I was just joking because then it loses its power for daddy, right? Here we go. Next guest. We got the Space Age Explorer, baby. Let's go. Request is joining. Come on up. Hey, what's going on, bro? We got about 30 minutes until the fight start, bro. Uh, no. Are you a Bible believer? <laughs> no, bro. Uh, no, you just, you you wound up saying my name earlier. I just wanted to say, like, bro, you're funny as hell, bro. Like, I don't, I don't have nothing against you. I think you're funny as hell. All right. I, th I, I thought I saw your name <laughs> in the queue, and I tried to hit accept, but it then it went away. So I didn't know if you were trying to yeah. join or what was up. Yeah, no, 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 bro. Like, I completely, I completely agree with you, bro. Like, I literally just found your channel, and I just, I've been listening to it for like the past couple of days. It's just funny as hell. Right on, brother. I appreciate you, I man. Appreciate follow you. me. I'll follow yeah. you back for sure. Yeah, I got you. I appreciate it. Right on, brother. Who are you going for tonight, Jake Paul or Diaz? Oh uh, man, I don't even watch that kind of stuff, man. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> I trained I, when I first started training jujitsu. I started training with the Diaz brothers because I live in Stockton. Uh, really? So I'm rooting for my two hundred nine boys, but man, it's gonna be tough. I think yeah. Jake might knock him out, bro. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun, bro. I appreciate right. you, though, bro. Take, yeah, take you, man. What is this? This, my friend, is where we destroy traditional religion. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. That's beautiful, Rob. Come on up and talk to Daddy. We'll put you in the pot, right? We'll put you in the pot. No problem. Hey, been training jujitsu a while. Nice. What belt are you? Do you train gi or no gi? I live in Stockton. 209, baby. Let's go. I'm here now. Beautiful, bro. I just sold a house in Stockton, too, actually. I'm not a real estate agent, but it was a house I own. I trained gi, a blue belt. Nice. I, I trained gi and no gi uh, for most of my jiu-jitsu career, but then I left gi and just started focusing mainly on no gi. So I train no gi now, mostly. Uh, I'm a brown belt, though. I'm a Christian. Bro, send me your best, man. Let's go, baby. All right, we got, we got another person in the queue. Let's get it. Christian, what up? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Are you a Bible-believing Christian? Uh, yes, sir. All right, man. What Bible translation do you read? Uh, 
I currently read the King James Version. All right, man. I'm asking you a couple easy questions to start you off, then we're going to get cooking, all right? Uh, all right. All right, here we go. Uh, what did God promise Abraham that made his wife laugh? That she would be pregnant and bear him a son. Yes. Which one of Jesus' disciples cut off a soldier's ear? Peter. Uh, what was Jesus' first miracle? Uh, the water turned to wine. And last easy one, how many wives did Solomon have? Oh, man. Hold on. Oh, shit. Hold on, oh, hold shit, on, Chris. Hold on, hold on. I'm ready to hit that buzzer, man. Don't, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, all right. I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm holding. Is it bro. in the 700s? I don't know. Is it? What's your answer? You got a couple people in the chat trying to help you out. Which one of them's lying and which one of them's telling the uh, truth? I don't I know. know. Uh, uh, and nobody's got it right. Uh, I mean, I'll just say 700. I'm ready for the buzzer. No buzzer. You got it right. Oh, Give it up woo. for Christian. Oh, man. Beautiful. I like it, man. Thank you. Uh, bec because we're on a time constraint, uh, we're going to get to a couple quick ones uh, to get you out of here. Um, can God repent? Do I have to answer just yes or no? Yes. Can he repent or can he not repent? Uh, hold on before I answer this, all right? I'm giving you a chance, man. It's all you, bro. All right. God cannot repent as man repents. Moses used human language to say the word repent to describe what God did. So God cannot repent in the way men repent. Correct. But God can repent as who? No, so it's called it start there's a fancy word for it. It starts with M. It's like morph methylorphism. I don't know. It's a long word. Basically it means human ling uh describing something of su uh supernatural in language like human language because we Are you trying to say that God can repent in some supernatural way that we can't understand? No, I'm saying he can't repent, but in order to come up with a um let me give an example. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time because I know you got to, you want to move on and everything like no, that. No, you're good, bro. I got 30 minutes until the fight. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So um, if I am looking to my right and a family lives to my right mm -hmm. and they move across the street and now I'm looking to the left, I didn't change, but the circumstances around me changed. So God didn't repent. God can't repent as man repents. Um, but the circumstances changed. And so in order for Moses to describe what he saw, and what he heard, he uses mm -hmm. a word as we know as repent. But God can't repent because he can't sin. But I know what okay, verse so, you're, I know what verse you're going to use. So your answer is God cannot repent as we know it. Correct. OK, so in Exodus 32, 14, where mm -hmm. it says the Lord, the Lord repented. Mm -hmm. It's not talking. It's not talking about. Um, repentance in the way we know it it's some other kind of repentance he it is something for in order for moses to try to explain what happened he used a language he had to use human language i mean obviously because we can only think and go so far with our right. thoughts and with our language um and so he so, said so, you're, to so your god it. couldn't figure out a way for him to describe it in a in an eloquent way so he just said put this other word down that doesn't actually mean repent just say repent but it doesn't mean repent i got it yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm take you to the next one. Is okay. there anything that the Christian God cannot do? Uh, he cannot lie. Uh, anything else? Like, uh, as far as scripture goes, I'm. that's all I can Come think on, of. man. I had faith in you, Christian. Dang it. Don't let me hit it. that buzzer, baby. All right. You were doing so well. What what else can he not do? Ah, this is where I'm going to give you a couple answers. The Bible says God cannot lie or change. Malachi three six, First Samuel fifteen twenty nine, James one seventeen, and Hebrews six seventeen eighteen all agree uh, he cannot lie or change. But also uh, Judges one nineteen says God cannot drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots made of iron. Okay, so these are a couple of scriptural things that God cannot do. But also, if anyone ever asks you this question again, what I'd like you to do is remind them that God cannot do logical absurdities. For example, if God is all-knowing, 
he can't learn new things. Because what's the first word in the phrase all? I mean, what's the first word in the phrase all knowing? The first word all. So if you're all knowing, it means you know everything. You can't learn new shit. Furthermore, if you're the greatest conceivable being, you can't create a being greater than yourself because there is nothing greater than the greatest. So God cannot do logical absurdities. But nice try. I think you got, actually, how many did he get right? Two? Did he get two or three right? Hmm? That's pretty good. The record for the Christian interrogation room was actually nine, for those of you who are interested in finding out. Uh, to win the money, you got to not get any wrong. Okay? You got to keep going. You can't get any wrong, but good try. Guys, who else we got in the in the queue? We got Ink and Algorithm. Ink, what up, bro? Would you like to try your hand against Daddy? Mm -hmm. And that's why I was like, oh, I got to Yes, sir. This guy said I'm the, I'm the bag. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Are you a Bible-believing Christian? Yes, sir, I am. All right, beautiful. Uh, and what Bible translation do you read? Uh, King James. Okay. Give me one second. No worries. All right, man. I'm going to start you off nice and easy. All right, hit me. Does the Lord judge outward appearance, or does he only judge the heart? He only judge the heart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. That's what he says. He's That's what the Bible says. I see it doesn't say that at all, little man. You just haven't taken the time to study it or read it because you think you have a divine book, but you don't give a fuck about it to study it or read it. Leviticus 21, 16 through 23 says that God, your fake fairy tale God, used to not let certain kind of people with physical defects not become preachers, give offerings, or even come inside the assembly, which is the church, right? And these people are listed. They include people like dwarfs, Hunchbacks, people with lazy eyes and flat noses. So, nice try, little man. He doesn't always judge the heart. Who do we got next? Mrs. Benjamin. I hope she's not a Hebrew. No, that is actually judging them. You made the judgment to not allow them to give offerings to you. And you made the judgment not allow them to be preachers. And you made the judgment to say they can't even come in to the fucking church. Nice try. Benjamin, what's up? Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's go. Hey, are you a Hebrew Israelite? I am not. I am a follower of Christ. Oh, my bad, my bad. I didn't mean to hit that button on you. Okay, so you're <laughs> a follower of Christ. You're a Bible-believing Christian. Beautiful, beautiful. And what Bible I, do you I, read? See, you just, you just, okay. I am a, a follower of Christ. I differ in the traditional Christian in that I, um, I believe that my, um, my God is um, strong enough to rebuild my promise in while I'm breathing and living in this day and not after I die. Mm -hmm. That's all beautiful semantic talk, but I got a question. Do you believe 2 Timothy 3.16? What does it say? It says, all scripture is the truth breathed by God. Not some of it, not a portion, not a percentage, not a little bit of it. All scripture is the truth breathed by God. Do you believe this or not? I do. All right, beautiful. Uh, and what Bible translation do you do you believe is all the truth breathed by God? King James Version, ESV, NIV, what's your go-to? Um, King James. All right, beautiful. Give me one second. All right, first question. How old was Jehoiachin when he became the king? I believe 12. <laughs> nice try. Mm. He was eight. But get, but guess what? Let me tell you something, Miss Benjamin. Second Chronicles 36, 9 says Jehoiachin was eight years old when he became the king. But you know what Second okay. Kings 24, 8 says? I'm listening. Second Kings 24, 8 says he was 18. So not only do you get the buzzer, but guess who else gets the buzzer? Your Bible. <laughs> you see, wait a minute. Well, the NIV, the NIV version, the NIV mm -hmm. version actually edited out this error because the NIV looked over the King James and he, they said, "This shit's got some fuck ups in it. We need to edit these changes." So if you go look in the NIV right now, they edited it out and they changed it, but it's still in the King James version right now. Go well, to I Second Chronicles. I think they definitely you think should leave the errors um, because the um, each Holy book was smoke. written by a different person, which was inspired by God. So 
Um, so so was your God not should... able to make it without heirs or, or he couldn't stop it from having heirs? Why did he allow heirs? Well, the God, not God, very nice. God is all spirit and works through mm. man. So when you have um, a spirit that works through the, the man, then that's what you get. But, um, but generally um, there is no uh, contradiction. So what you're saying, in the word. so what you're saying, so what you're saying is his delivery method was poor. He chose a poor delivery method to give his word because well, humans well, are fallible, script, well, the, well, but God is infallible. And time out, Miss Benjamin, you said that there's no contradictions in the Bible, but I just gave you one in five seconds. And um, then you said, uh, well, and then you said, no, 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 no. Look, look, I hit you with the buzzer. I hit you with the buzzer because I asked you how old was Jehochin when he became king? You said 12. But Second Chronicles says eight, and Second Kings says eighteen. So you got it wrong. So I hit you with the <laughs> right, and then I said to you, um, "Why are there?" Or I asked you, "Is there errors in the Bible?" You said, "There's no errors or contradictions in the Bible." But this is one clearly right here. And you then said, "Well, they should just leave it." And you said they should leave the errors in the Bible because God picked a poor delivery method because humans are fallible. Hey, have you lost your fucking mind? Uh, sit down in the back of the class. Captain Morgan, who do we got next? Daddy, have we not won? Do we not have a single Christian who could get past well, at least well, 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 five well, questions tonight? Tell me, Can we, dude, Captain? Dude, have you been dude, drinking dude, again? Dude, have you dude, been dude, drinking dude, again, dude, Bubby? Dude, have you I'm been dude, drinking dude, again, dude. Bubby? Hey, you're in the interrogation room, so what you need to do right now is shut the fuck up. Okay? No, you got to be quiet, little man. And then I'm going to ask you some questions. And if you can't answer the questions, then you're going to get hit with the buzzer. Are you a Bible believing Christian? Yes or no? Oh yeah. And what Bible translation do you read, little man? I read the original Aramaic. I don't read translation. So if you got the original Aramaic, then let's talk. Of course, it no one has the original. You know original why? Aramaic, you know why no one has the. You, you know why no one has the fucking originals? Because your God, your fake fairy tale God, allowed them to be destroyed or lost. <laughs> That's beautiful, right? Uh, no, right, we go. didn't, you dumbass. You lose. You lose. <laughs> you are wrong. Here we go, little man. On you. Get the fuck out of here, you dumbass. Captain Morgan been on that shit. bottle. Captain Morgan been on that bottle a little too much tonight, huh? Yeah. That's, hey, hey, man, don't get behind the wheel tonight, little man. Please don't do it. Uh, while we wait for another Christian to come on up and talk to Daddy, let's ask a couple more questions. Um, actually, let's not ask a question yet. Let's read one of my favorite Bible verses, which is, uh, give me one second, Ezekiel 2320. Everyone open your Bibles to Ezekiel 2320 and read it together. She lusted after lovers with genitals as large as a donkey's and emissions like those of a horse. Ah! Can you explain, Christians, why your fake fairy tale fucking God felt that it was important to add this into his magical book? Why is there no divine or special unknown information in the Bible about science or the universe, modern technology, modern medicine, quantum mechanics, artificial intelligence, etc.? But he made sure to add that story in about Ezekiel 2320. Hmm. Pretty fucking sick, right? And then they call me the bad guy. Hey, I'm not the bad guy. I'm the good guy. Imagine you got two neighbors, right? One of your neighbors says it's okay to dash innocent babies on rock sometimes. And the other neighbor, he calls them out for it. Which neighbor's the bad guy? Clearly the first one. You and your fake fairy tale God are the first neighbor. I'm the second one. I'm just the one calling him out for his bullshit, right? <laughs> Who do we got next, man? Send me your best preacher, pastor, friend, family member, man. I'm ready to cook. We got a few more minutes before the fight. Uh, how about this? Do you guys think that daughters, think about this, daughters who violate their own father, for his seed. It says they violated him for his seed. Do you think daughters who violate their own father for his seed should be condemned and punished? Well, let us all together read Genesis 19, 30 through 38. Lot's two daughters are violating him for his seed, right? And after they do this, what does God do? Does he immediately condemn or punish this action? Does he say it's an abomination? Does he strike the daughters down? Nah. You know what he does? He says, Lot is now the father of all the Ammonites today. Ah! Essentially glorifying it. Hey, 
In other words, if you get violated by your daughters for your seed, you can be the father of all the Ammonites. Ah! And then the funny part about this is later on in the book, later on in this fake fairy tale magical book they call the Bible, supposedly God made two bears come out of the forest and maul 42 children just because they were teasing a bald prophet. So, if you're a child and you're teasing a bald prophet, you get the bears. You get immediate recourse. You get the bears, baby. But if you're a daughter who violates their own father for a seed, you don't get no bears, right? Why would you get the bears? It's not that bad. But if you're a child, don't you dare fucking tease our bald prophets, little man. <laughs> hey, come on, man. We got 185 of you guys in here. Are all you guys yellow belly fucking amoebas? Hmm? All you guys? Basically, Christians at this point are like the Wizard of Oz 2.0. Huh? They're a mixture of the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion all wrapped up into one. And now that the words got out about Daddy in the Christian interrogation room, we can't even hardly find a Christian who will come up and talk to us, other than people like uh, Captain Morgan, who are clearly drunk. Right? <laughs> Dylan, come on up, bro. All you got to do is hit that little request button. It's at the bottom, baby. Hit the icon. Come on, come on up. Let's read another fun verse. Guys, put your answer to this question down in the comments. Is it ever okay for an innocent woman to be violated? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Is it ever okay that an innocent woman be violated? Sometimes, always, or never. Hmm. I'm going with never. But the Christians, because their moral compass is so fucked, they're forced to say sometimes. <laughs> because their God's a fucking joke, right? He's a disgusting, vile, abhorrent, imaginary being. So they're forced to say shit like, sometimes it's okay if our God says so. Let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy 28.30. I'll give you the context. The, Israel, the Israelites here, they're told by Moses that if they start being bad, naughty boys, and they don't listen, then God is going to hand them down a bunch of punishments. And he lists these punishments. But one of these punishments that everyone always seems to overlook in Deuteronomy 28.30, I'm going to give it to you. One of the punishments he lists, if these guys are bad boys, is he says, he will allow their wives to be violated. Ah! So this will be an active punishment handed down by God himself for the husbands being bad boys. Not because of anything the wives did. Nah, nah, nah. Again, punishing innocent people for the crimes of evil people is a common theme with your fake fairy tale God. So let's continue on here. Deuteronomy 29.1 goes on and says, These are the words of the covenant that the Lord himself commanded Moses to make with these Israelites. Deuteronomy 29.20 reiterates this when the Lord says, All of these curses written in this book that are listed, each one of these curses, shall lie upon the Israelites if they don't listen. Then Deuteronomy 31 confirms these people will break the covenant and that they will, in fact, get the punishments. So it was promised, and then it was carried out. So my question is, how many innocent women do you think your God made get violated? Ah! Not very nice, right? Why do we not have anyone in the queue? You guys don't like listening to me talk to myself. I don't like listening to me talk to myself. I'm not even good at talking, bro. I'm good at fucking cooking. Let's go on to another one. Is it ever okay, sometimes, always, or never, to cause someone to eat their own children? And yes, you heard me right. Eat their own children. Always, sometimes, or never. Now, anyone with a sound moral compass will say, it's never okay to cause someone to eat their own children. Are you fucking kidding me? But watch the Christians down in the comments. They're going to have to say, sometimes, sometimes it's okay to cause people to eat their own children. Yes, look at T.J. Smith. He said yes. <laughs> because their fake fairy tale God is so vile and abhorrent and disgusting, they're forced to say this. You see, the God of theistic essentialism, when you follow the one true living God of the universe and not any of these fake fairy tale gods, you don't have to say crazy shit like it's okay to cause someone to eat their own children. Now, a lot of you Christians maybe don't even know this verse. Open your Bibles to Jeremiah 19.9, and also Deuteronomy 28.53 reiterates this. It reads, I will cause them, wait, I will what? I will cause them, hold on, no, no, no. You will what? 
I will cause them to eat their own children. Ah! Firstly, why is God punishing innocent children, right? They didn't do anything. If you're all knowing, why not just figure out a way to punish the evildoers? For example, make the evildoers just eat each other or something and not eat the kids. Hmm. Not very nice, right? But this is what your God likes to do. Also, where do you start out? Behind the knees, the nape of the neck, huh? the elbows? Not very nice. But this is what your God likes to do. Cannibalism, it's not objectively wrong. It's beautiful. Christians, tell me this. Why didn't your God let people in the church who had damaged peanuts? The Bible says men who had damaged peanuts could not come into the assembly. Deuteronomy 23.1. If you were asking me about the one true living God of the universe, the God of theistic essentialism, it'd be pretty fucking weird if I told you that, well, our God won't let people in church who have damaged or crushed nuts. He'd be like, hey, see you later, alligator. I'm fucking out of here. I'm not down with this Jim Jones shit. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take it serious. But for some reason, you have this in your fucking book. People with damaged or crushed peanuts can't come into church? What? That's not right. How dare you? And who's checking at the door, right? Are you checking at the door? This guy changed checking at the door. How about this one? Sometimes, always, or never. Is it ever okay to unalive someone who doesn't want to finish in their brother's wife? You heard me correctly. Would it ever be okay to unalive someone who doesn't want to finish in their brother's wife? All the time, sometimes, or never. You see, Christianity is the fucking pinnacle. It's the Mount Everest of special pleading. Because you're forced to constantly say, no, that's not okay, but my God can do it. No, that's terrible, but my God can do it. No, that's abhorrent and vile and disgusting, but guess what? My God can do it. Right? Special pleading on top of special pleading on top of special pleading. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis 38, 9 through 10. God wanted Onan to get it in with his brother's wife. And God wanted Onan to finish inside of her. But Onan didn't want to do this shit. He's like, nah, 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 little man, I'm not doing this. Because Onan was a good guy, and he didn't feel comfortable finishing inside of his unalive brother's wife. Because he had better morality than your fake God. So you know what Onan did? He's like, I ain't doing that, so he finished on the floor. But God didn't like this. So you know what your fake God did? He unalived on it. Hm. Now, this begs the question. You think men should be forced to finish inside their dead brother's ladies? With the threat of being unalived? That's justice to you? Hey, sit down in the back of the class, little man. Daddy's fucking talking, right? No Christian in the world can fucking defeat me. Send me your best, please. Send me your best. Preacher, pastor, friend, family member, whoever the fuck you got. Send them on over and watch me cook. Who do you guys got? God is not the problem. Humans are. That's funny. Your God is the one that made these, that made these fucking, uh, that made these rules. Your God is the one that made these laws. You guys, let's talk about generational curses. One of my favorite topics from the Bible. I love this shit, man. Let's talk about generational curses. God punishing babies to the third and fourth generation who had absolutely nothing at all to do with the crime. That's justice to you? Of course that's not justice. Imagine right now. Imagine our justice system worked like that on earth. Right? Someone knocks at your door right now. Hey, open up. You got to go to prison. Oh, yeah, for what? Well, your great-great-grandfather was a bad guy, so now you got to go to prison. You'd be like, nah, fuck that little man. I'm not going. Because, you know, that's not righteousness. That's not justice. That's not fair. Similarly, if you took your kids to a new school this year, you drop him off at the school and the principal says, hey, your kid has to serve detention. Detention. You're like, for what? It's his first fucking day. Principal's like, we don't give a shit about that. The kids a hundred years ago were bad as fuck. So now your kid has to serve detention for them. You'd be like, see you later, alligator. We're fucking out of here. We're going to go to a school that is just, righteous, and fair. Right? Hmm? Lee, appreciate you, bro. Because the true God of the universe has to be just, righteous, and fair. But the God of the Bible, of course, is vile, disgusting, abhorrent, and not just at all. So, he's punishing babies to the third and fourth generation who had nothing to do with the original crime just because they're 
uh, family members were bad prior to them. So imagine your whole life is cursed because God put a curse over you because your family members were bad. All right. So not only is that not justice, but let me add another level. Let me add another layer to this, which you may not have noticed. If you're a Christian, you believe that God sends babies to mothers and fathers. And he selects the mothers and fathers for these babies. So, if that's true, God, focus on this, God is the one sending babies to these lineages and then punishing them for being in that lineage. Hmm. Here, baby, go to this lineage, then I'm going to curse your entire life for you being inside that lineage. Also, I'm gonna, it, the curse is happening because of something that you didn't do. There's like three levels of fuckery in this. Can you believe, can you believe that anyone on earth actually takes this shit serious, huh? Hey, have you guys lost your fucking minds? All right, who do we got next? We got Brother Adrian. Brother Adrian, what's up, bro? I'm going to, I got to go get ready for the fight. Yo, Adrian, what up? Hey, man, um, I agree hey. with every single thing that you're saying. I agree with the concept. It, bro. And I just wanted to say, though, I don't know that it's fair because I don't think many biblical scholars could answer all hundred of your questions if they wanted to, because these questions are so granular in their mm -hmm. scope. I don't mm -hmm. know that even a biblical scholar could answer all of them. Because could you give me an example of a question that I asked that was granular? Well, asking um, one I heard not too long ago was the one about um, who – how old was the king when he became king, um, like 8, 12, or 18, uh -huh. or something like that? Right. I appreciate that you're saying that, um, yeah, there are contradictions in the Bible. It's not univocal. It's not without error. I 100% agree with you on that, but I've studied it for 20 years, and I couldn't answer that question off the top of my head. Right, and, and, you, and you, know you, why, you know why you can't answer it? Because I've studied you know different why? parts of the Bible. I agree wrong. with you. Because, wrong. I'm going to tell you why. Is because the Bible is too fucking long. If let me give you an example. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. If I were to if I were to write my children a letter that was a matter of life and death, let's say their 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 lives depended on it, I would make that letter the perfect length so they could read it over multiple times. Okay, but less than one percent of human beings on earth have read the Bible more than two times. You know why? Because it's too fucking long. And oh, this I is more evidence. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is, hold on. What I'm doing is I'm showing more evidence that their God doesn't exist. You just, because your IQ is too low, you didn't realize what I was doing, right? And that's not my problem. That's your problem. So that's why you came on up. Now I'm helping you to understand. So not only did their God make their Bible too fucking long, he also made it so confusing that less than 1% of them actually agree with each other on the fucking contents, right? And to prove this, all you got to go do right now is scroll social media. Actually, just scroll social or scroll TikTok lives right now and watch all the Christians arguing with each other 24-7 about the metaphors, the allegories, the different scripture meanings, uh, the how to achieve salvation, once saved, always saved, all the shit. Less than 1% even agree with each other. You could have one church across the street and then another church on the other side of the street, and they can't even agree with each other on the fucking context. Because their God is the author of confusion. So not only did he make a, a book too fucking long, he also made a book that was too fucking confusing. It would be like this. It would be like if I had a book on jujitsu and all the jujitsu practitioners couldn't even agree with each other on the contents of that book. Well, if that was true, clearly all the non-jujitsu practitioners wouldn't be able to agree with the fucking contents of the book meant, right? And this would prove that the writer of that jujitsu book was, in fact, the author of confusion. He didn't make it clear. He didn't make it concise. He made it too fucking long. He made the originals. He allowed the originals to be lost or destroyed. And then let me add this in to, on top of it. Not only that, if you were writing your children a letter that their lives depended on, you would send it directly to them. So they would have no question on its authenticity or whether it was true, etc. You would send it directly to them. You wouldn't send it to their friends and then expect your kids to take their friend's word for it that it was true. Nah. But that's another layer, your fake fairy tale Christian God, what he did. He sent his word supposedly to 40 people, and then he expects the other 8 billion of us to take their fucking word for it. Nah, ain't happening, little man. Now, this is where you say, get behind me, Satan. I don't like logic, right? Get behind me. But what is Jin Jitsu? I said Jiu Jitsu, bro. Get behind me, Satan. You'll see the devil in hell. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, this shit is good, bro. I think we got one more person in the queue. Where'd you go? Come back, baby. Come back. Come back, man. You see, the one true living God of the universe, the God of theistic essentialism, no one argues uh, about his revelation. No one argues. No one's confused. It's clear. It's concise. Let me give you an example. No one ever needed to teach you that it was wrong to violate an innocent woman because the true God of the universe put that inside everyone's hearts. You don't see people on TikTok arguing 24-7 about whether it's okay or it's not okay to violate an innocent woman. Because you see, the true God of the universe put objective moral values and duties inside all of our hearts. He didn't send it to our neighbor and expect our neighbor, or expect us to take our neighbor's word for it. He didn't put in a book that was too long to fucking read. He didn't make it too confusing for us to understand so we would argue with each other all day. We all know inside of our hearts. You didn't read it. You didn't need to be taught. And you can have it revealed directly to yourself. No one needed to tell you. You didn't need to be on the theistic essentialist page for me to teach you this. You already knew that it's wrong to violate innocent women. But if you want to go watch the God of Christianity, the author of confusion, all you got to go do is look at the Christians themselves arguing with each other non-fucking-stop because they can't figure it out. Each one of them thinks they have the correct translation, the correct understanding. Right. It's a fucking pathetic joke. What are our views on the afterlife? Go look at the view, uh, the videos on the page, man. we got plenty of videos up about heaven, hell, uh, the afterlife, morality, the three places God revealed himself to us, objective moral values and duties on your heart, sound formal objective logic, and also in his creation through nature. Uh, we're not atheists. We're deists. We're a modern form of deism. We know God created life laws limits in the universe, but we know that God cannot intervene in his creation because it would violate his essential nature. Uh, Christians hate me because I destroy traditional religion, and atheists hate me because I'm the author of T. And T is an acronym that stands for the Eliot Argument. It's a logically deductive syllogism that proved the existence of God. So atheists refer to me as the atheist killer, and Christians just fucking hate me because of the shit like this. What do you think about Islam? Uh, we're not permitted. Theistic essentialists are not permitted to... Uh, associate with um, Muslims, LGBTQ members, Hebrew Israelites, and a couple others. And the last time I tried to explain this, TikTok took me down. Uh, I was banned from going live for like a week. So basically, go watch the videos on my page about it. Uh, the short of it is you don't want to go over to your neighbor's house and hang out with them and associate with them if he's vile, disgusting, and abhorrent, right? And if you don't think... Those guys are vile and abhorrent. All you got to do is ask Aisha, right? It's just ask Aisha, little man. Hey, Cain, why you keep saying coward, but you're the one who won't come on up and talk to daddy, right? You got plenty of followers, little man. Looks like you's the coward, right? Buckle up. It's going to be a nice ride. Yeah, I got videos about Islam. But we're not allowed to associate with uh, vile, disgusting, abhorrent, failed, miserable, disgusting human beings uh before i get out of here man it's six o'clock the fight's about to start i always like to do this at the end for people who aren't familiar with theistic essentialism what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a my god versus your god recap because people always ask who is your god tell us about your god because once i destroy christianity and people watch me do that and then they, they still know in their heart that God exists. They're like, fuck, where, well, where does this leave me? Because I know God exists, but he just destroyed Christianity. So now what the fuck do I do with this? Well, now you got to understand who the true God of the universe is. And to do that, I'm going to give you a quick recap. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare my God to the Christian God real quick. And then if you have more questions, you can follow me. I'll follow you back and I'll send you all the videos, etc. Um, also, know this about theistic essentialism. We don't believe in no weird, spooky shit. We're not into crystals, fucking palm reading. We're not going to make you drink grape juice and pretend it's blood. It's not no cult, Jim Jones, weird shit. We don't have one fucking leader. We're not going to eat crackers and pretend it's flesh. None of this weird, spooky shit, right? We're a religion based on logic. And if it ain't logic, it's out, little man. All right, here we go. My God versus your God. Quick recap, then I got to get out of here, man. The Jake Paul fight is about to be underway. Uh, your God unalives innocent people. To punish evil people. Think about that. Oh, fuck. Your God unalives innocent people to punish the evil people. My God would never do this. Your God discriminates against dwarfs and people with physical defects, such as hunchbacks and people with crushed nuts and won't let them into a church. My God would never do this. 
Your God sometimes causes people to eat their own children. My God would never do this. Your God loves some people on earth more than others, right? His special chosen people, the Israelites. My God would never. My God loves everyone equally. Your God punishes people for the sins that they didn't commit. Hmm? My God never does this. Your God thinks certain forms of slavery, they'll say, well, it wasn't shadow slavery. Your God thinks certain forms of slavery are sometimes okay. My God never thinks any forms of slavery are okay. Your God regrets doing things, you know, like uh, when he first made everything, he looked out over everything in Genesis and he said, oh, everything I've made, it looks all good. But then later he had a change of mind and he said, oh man, I regret making this shit. This grieves me to my heart. Originally he thought it was all good. He wasn't grieved to his heart at that point. But then later he got grieved to his heart. But guess what? My God is never grieved to his heart or regrets doing things because guess what? All powerful. Your God has beings, angels that help him fight. My God doesn't, because if you're all powerful, you don't need little minions or little beings to help you fight. Uh, you can refer to the Bible verse in Revelation where angels are helping God fight the dragon. And the dragon in this context is Satan. Uh, God also hand, hands angels swords. I don't know why, but apparently if you're an all-powerful being, you need little minions with swords to help you beat people up. A, a problem here is even Thanos is stronger than that because Thanos can just snap his fingers and lay all his enemies down. He doesn't need angels or minions with swords. And the gun of theistic essentialism is even more powerful than that. He doesn't need to snap his fingers or need little minions to help him. All he does is just think about it in his mind and everyone lays down. Um, your God sends people hemorrhoids. My God doesn't. Your God likes golden hemorrhoids for... Um, your God likes golden hemorrhoids for offerings. My God doesn't. Your God sometimes contradicts himself in his magical book. My God doesn't. Your God has human emotions. He can be manipulated as he gets jealous. My God never does. Uh, your God says, if a man violates an innocent woman, she has to marry him if he pays off her father 50 shekels of silver. My God never would do this. Your God wrote a book, which he said your salvation depends on, but he allowed it to have errors in it. My God would never do this. Your God used to tell people to dash their, their enemies' babies on rocks. Don't find, your innocent, don't find your enemies' babies and save them and bring them into a loving home and raise them up to love God. Nah, nah, nah. What I want you to do is I want you to find them. Find your enemies' babies and dash them on the rocks. My God would never do this, right? Your God lies to people and sends them delusions, makes them believe delusions. Uh, my God never does this. Your God hands out generational curses to babies born in a certain lineage who had no effect on the crime, but he's the one who put them in the lineage. My God would never do this. Your God causes innocent women to get violated as punishment for their husband's crimes. Think about that. My God never would do this. Your God does not condemn or punish daughters who violate their father for his seed. My God would. Your God tells people not to call people fools, but then he turns around and calls people fools. Hmm. Not a very righteous moral standard there, huh, Bubby? Your God makes children get mauled by bears for teasing bald people. My God doesn't. Your God lied to you and told you that you can drink poison and hold poisonous snakes and it won't hurt you if you've been baptized. Ugh. How about you try it? Your God told parents to unalive their children if their children don't listen. My God doesn't. Your God creates illogical narratives that are completely unnecessary. For example, to be able to provide salvation and atonement for sin, I need a perfect sinless sacrifice. I need blood. I need perfect animal balls. I need five golden hemorrhoids and five golden rats, etc. My God, because he's all-powerful, he doesn't need any of these things to provide atonement and salvation for sin. Right? Let me give you an example. Imagine you got two Michael Jordans. I always use this thought experiment. You ask the first Michael Jordan, hey, can you dunk a basketball? He says, sure, no problem. He goes up and dunks a basketball. You ask the second Michael Jordan, can you dunk a basketball? He says, nope. The only way I can dunk a basketball is if first I drink my Gatorade, I pet my magical cat, and I put on my special shoes, and then I can dunk a basketball as well. Which Michael Jordan is more powerful? Clearly the first one. Because the first one doesn't have any requirements that need to be met in order to perform his function. The second one does. Your God is the second Michael Jordan. He says, to be able to provide salvation and atonement for sin, I need a perfect sinless sacrifice. I need to sacrifice my own son, basically. Hmm? But the God of theistic essentialism, nah, nah, nah. He's all-powerful. The true definition of all-powerful. He can provide salvation and atonement for sin all on his own without any fucking mediation. We can go on and on about how our gods are not the same. But your God isn't better than mine in even a single category. Your God is vile, immoral, illogical, reprehensible. 
disgusting. Your God is weak, emotional, not worthy of worship. Your God isn't even omnipotent, even though you claim he is. And most importantly, my God is the one true living God of the universe. And luckily, your fake fairy tale God doesn't fucking exist. Right? I love you guys, man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, follow. Follow me back. Maybe we'll do this again after the fights tonight, like around 1030. This is called the Christian Interrogation Room. I love you guys. Uh, what you need to do, actually, is find me your best preacher, pastor, friend, or family member so I can have, actually, a challenge for once in my, my measly little life. I appreciate you guys, man. Stay safe out there, and please, stay away from the Christians, the LGB, all those guys. <laughs> yes, the Hebrew Israelites, the Muslims, and all of them. I appreciate you, man. Take it easy, bro. I'm out. I'll be back later tonight, bro. Follow me. I'll hit you back. Yep. Yeah. Take it easy. Peace. Your God's a joke.